evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight's meeting is a meeting of the local plan advisory group. My name is uh, Councillor Jackie Porter. I'm the cabinet member for the built environment and well-being. So welcome tonight. I believe we have a number of guests and uh, guest speakers and I welcome you too. Um, I think that I just wanted to start by saying owing to the, of it, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and government guidance, it isn't possible to hold this meeting in person. So the council has therefore made arrangements under the Coronavirus Act 2020 and subsequent regulations promote, permitting remote meetings to hold this meeting virtually. If you're a member of the public and would like to listen to the audio stream of the meeting, you may do so via winchester.gov.uk. At the same time, um, I've got a description of, uh, we just usually are aware as time has gone on that there is a, a, a process which is better for the clear voicing of the meetings. Uh, so there are a few housekeeping reminders just to run through uh, because these new working practices are in response to the regulations. First of all, please can I ask everyone present that your microphones remain muted and your camera is turned off while you're not addressing the, dis the, the meeting, as this will reduce the background noise and avoid any unintentional disturbances. And can I also advise that the meeting is being audio recorded and live streamed from the Council's website. In addition, a video recording will be uploaded to the Council's YouTube channel in due course. And it would be really helpful if when speaking and referring to the agenda papers, could you make sure you reference the page or paragraph number? Thank you. And please note the duration of this meeting is two hours and any business not conducted after this time may be deferred to an alternative date. Can I ask uh, Democratic Services officers to confirm the names of officers present and the councillors that are actually on the advisory group, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, could I do a roll call of members that are present uh, this evening at tonight's meeting? First of all, Councillor Porter, Chair. Yes, present. Councillor Brooke. Yes, I'm present. Thank you. Councillor Evans. Yes, present. Thank you. Councillor Ferguson. Good evening, present. Good evening. Councillor Horrell. Yes, good evening. I'm present. Good, thank you. Councillor Rutter. Yes, I'm present. Thank you. Thank you again. And Councillor Thompson. Uh, yes, I'm present. Good evening. Yes, thank you. That's all members of the advisory group are, are present and in the meeting. Uh, you asked me about the officers present and we have Adrian Fox, Strategic Planning Manager, and also Bridget Taylor. Uh, from Strategic Planning and also other members of staff from Strategic Planning, including Jill Lee and Steve Opercik. We have Simon Finch, Corporate Head of Regulatory. And we have myself, Dave Shaw from Democratic Services, with David Blakemore tonight, also from Democratic Services. And I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you that councillors Bell and Hutchinson have registered to speak as uh, members of the City Council. And the members of the public present are Mr. Patrick Davis and Mr. Robert Shields from Bishop's Walton Council. Councillor Porter, I think you need to unmute the microphone. Uh, yeah, I do. Sorry, I was listening to more. Making papers rustle. Um, disclosure of interests um, or apologies. There are no apologies apart from the ones you described. Uh, disclosure of interests. Have anybody got any disclosure of interest they want to raise now? Please do so. No, none. Um, I'm going to register a personal interest as a county councillor. Thank you. Um, to note any request from councillors to make representations on an agenda item. Um, I presume that most councillors would like to make those um, representations at the agenda item. Can I just check that's true? That will be yes. Councillor Bell and Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah. Are you happy, Councillor yeah. Bell and Hutchinson? Yes. yes. Thank you. Um, yes. Minutes of the previous meeting held on the 20, 23rd of November. Is everybody happy with those minutes? Agreed. Agreed. Any issues Agreed. now? Agreed. Okay, so we'll go forward and accept those minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, public participation. Um, 
again, public participation. Uh, I have two speakers, uh, Mr. Davis and Mr. Shields. Would you like to speak now or would they would it be more appropriate for you to speak to the particular agenda item that you wish to speak about? I, I'm happy to say my piece now. If it's right. OK, <laughs> David, would you like to start? And then Mr Shields, what would you like to do? I'm happy with either. OK, um, so we'll do both of them now. Then. So Mr Davis first and then Mr Shields second, if that's OK. There's a lot of background noise. I don't know whether some yes. members just, are appearing and they shouldn't be. Yes, I'm just going to make sure that everybody has got their microphones off except for you so that we'll be able to concentrate on what you say. Thank you very much. And I'm going to switch mine off too. Thank you very much. Uh, I have enormous sympathy for the officers who have had to produce such a thorough draft consultation at these extraordinarily difficult times. I have a few questions and comments on the text because I think it's important there's absolute clarity in what this exercise involves. And if I can say, I don't think the situation has been helped by the two rival petitions being promoted by groups on the council on their websites on these local plan issues, nor until very recently by highly misleading material being distributed door to door despite the COVID emergency. Having said that, I, I do also wonder if a consultation document of 100 pages is appropriate. I'm assuming there will be summary materials and it'd be nice to know how this is actually going to be done, if there's going to be a separate questionnaire or how it will all work. Wholly admirable, admirable as the carbon neutrality objective may be, is it wise to include material which may conflict with national policy, such as the issues governed by building regulations, which is referred to on page 21. And should so many pages of the document cover this topic, worthy as it is, in various places, sustainable public transport is mentioned with many references to walking and cycling. Fine, that's splendid. But never does the word bus, let alone the word train, appear. Surely once COVID issues are sorted, it is vitally important for the council to encourage the use of buses and trains. This should always have been a major objective. Why is it not spelled out? On page, pages 28 to 31, uh, the green belt issue is raised, but I do wonder if enough emphasis is made on the, the rarity of green belt in this part of England, their real purpose and the meaning of exceptional circumstances surely a risk of raising expectations which cannot be fulfilled. On page 35 onwards, the relationship between developers' aspirations in the Sheila, the government's planning white paper, and its fluctuating demands on housing numbers. Are we sure these paragraphs are as clear and up to date as they could be? Isn't there a real risk of confusion worse confounded when this actually goes out to the public? Uh, also, my last point is in Appendix 1, there's a list of many pieces of work which have been carried out before COVID hit us. Many months ago, I did question at one of your meetings if some of these were still remotely relevant or would be updated. I repeat that request because I think it's important that we don't put out a lot of material or you don't put out a lot of material which is so out of date. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr Davis, and hopefully we'll address some of those points, but I've written them all down and I think uh, that's precisely why this local plan advisory group is here, because um, what we can read having been working and officers can read having worked on these uh, for a long time, it doesn't necessarily bring out what the public would expect to see. And so it's very good to have somebody else read it uh, and make some comments. So thank you very much. We'll certainly take all of those into account. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr Shields, would you like to speak now? Thank you. Thank you, yes. Um, Bishop's Waltham Parish Council. I much appreciate the opportunity to address you on behalf of Bishop's Waltham Parish Council, representing our residents. We understand the need for this new local plan and the requirement to get the right policies in place from the start. Consultation is critical. Although we do not know how many new dwellings are proposed, 
we would be unlikely to challenge the number, provided the local character is preserved and it is commensurate with the limited infrastructure available. But we want to work closely with you to arrive at a plan in the same way as we did last time around, offering you solutions compiled by residents that were accepted in their entirety into the local plan part two. It is in this spirit and, I, and on behalf of the Parish Council, I offer two strategic proposals. Bishop's Waltham Town is long and thin. To retain the character of a market town with an easily accessible town centre, it needs to be rounded. This requires high level planning. The current Sheila is merely the summation of land offered for development by landowners. There is no rhyme or reason in planning terms for the overall pattern. To select sites only from this restricted availability is the antithesis of planning. Instead, a proper town plan should be formulated with landowners then being approached as needed. Secondly, about half the current settlement boundary of Bishop's Waltham is bounded by the South Downs National Park, which constrains all new developments in one direction only. There are some suitable sites for development to the north of the town, but the South Downs Authority has no priority in their own plans for developments in this area, further unbalancing the geographical layout of the town. We would request there to be a statement of common ground or other similar agreement with the South Downs National Park Authority to share the number of new developments for the sustainability of Bishop's Waltham. Turning now to your draft consultation document. It is certainly comprehensive and lengthy, and I hope you will be able to give due regard to returns from parish councils, which can truly represent the majority of residents, knowing well from past surveys and consultations what they want. There isn't the time to speak on every to topic in the document, but suffice it to say, the existing vision for the market town still looks fine, as do the sustainable development objectives. Achieving carbon neutrality is important, but parish councils have limited ability to participate in the opportunity mapping or analysing carbon emissions at parish level. For the protection of the rural characteristics of the market towns and villages, it is more important to define local green areas and settlement gaps and to focus on large scale green belts. Recent events have placed a premium on reasonable sized gardens. Where this is not possible, housing developments should include green spaces for leisure and allotments, as well as play areas. Thank you, and we look forward to working with you in the coming months and years. Thank you very much, Mr Shields. That was uh, very enlightening and uh, very helpful. Thank you very much indeed. In fact, at uh, one of the seminars that we did earlier in the year, uh, one of the planners very clearly said we should plan first and then ask for sites afterwards. And I think that's exactly what you're describing. So thank you very much. We'll certainly take those points into account. Um, I think we'll now carry on to the main body of the meeting. Um, we'll bring you tonight two interlinked papers. The first one is a method by which Winchester City Council will seek the views. And the second is a description of the strategic issues and options papers, which will go out for consultation plan to close that consultation on the 23rd of March. Um, Bridget Taylor is leading uh, on the website and I'm going to ask her to uh, come onto the screen, please. Thank you, Councillor Porter. Um, I shall attempt to share my screen to show you some images. So now, will you be so kind as to tell me if this still works? Can you see that now that I've expanded it? Great. Yes, we um, can. So we have instructed Studio Republic, who are a local firm, to prepare some branding for the new local plan uh, exercise. And they are in the process of developing a website, which will be a standalone website, uh, which will host all of the local plan consultations and information so that everything can be found in one location. So the branding, the, the strap line essentially is your place, your plan. Now, the astute of you will notice that the picture I've got on the right says our place, your plan, which is um, in development. So that will be changed. But this broadly gives you the idea of the colour palette that has been chosen for the branding. Um, and the website is focused around four key areas. The, the home area, an area which sets out the key issues and then an area called discover your area, which is a mapping feature. And then the fourth area is the consultation section. So if we just look very briefly at each of those. So the home section is where we will feature uh, 
background information, context, information to help people to understand what a local plan is, why it's important uh, and what the process is. And we will also in this location provide information about the government's proposed changes to the planning system and our responses that we've made and any changes to our process throughout. Um, and we will aim to have some videos embedded here where we will explain um, for those who would prefer to see a video rather than reading detailed text on the website. The next section is the key issues section and as you will see in the strategic issues and priorities document there are nine key issues which are listed here. Each of these has been um, given a logo which has been designed by Studio Republic and this will accompany that issue throughout the local plan process. Um, these are not finalised but this gives you an indication of, of where we're heading. Um, and under each of these green topic areas you'll be able to click a button and um, drop down and there'll be a number of other documents which will provide flesh to the bones essentially. So there will evidence uh, reports which have been commissioned relevant to that topic will be added there and we will also add a number of short background topic papers. So for example, if we think there is some basic information needed to help understand a topic, we will be preparing a short one to two page note which can go on there as a PDF document. For example, a note explaining how the housing target is calculated and so on. The next section is discover your area. So this aims to enable people to focus in on what it really means for them in their local area. So it will provide some information and lead to this interactive map. We're aiming here to bring the website very much in line with what the government is promoting in their recent white paper, which is digital based mapping, uh, making people uh, able to understand with maps how development might result in their area. So please don't take these um, outlines as anything here. This is the designers have just thrown those in as indicative. Um, but we will feature on this map things such as Sheila sites um, and listed buildings or and in time if we see some of the government's changes to the planning system eventuate we can then build up more information in this map to display um, so hypothetically growth areas or something of that nature. And fine, uh, thirdly, the, sorry, finally, the have your say section. Uh, so this will give people the ability to register to receive direct updates um, in their inbox. Uh, and we're hoping to include some information here which really explains to people the importance of getting involved because we are trying through this website to make sure we reach um, a, a wide portion of the district really and try to engage some people who might not have been involved in a local plan before. And then we are building in a feature which enables us to have short polls here. Now the aim of this is given COVID-19 um, we will be holding some live events around this consultation and we hope to have some interactive questions during those events. Um, Slido will be used to do polls and so on to get some feedback from the people who attend those events and we would very much like to ensure that anyone who is not able to attend those events still has the ability to answer those questions um, and they'll feature here on this part of the website and it will help us to gain an understanding of the uh, issues which people are interested in, the issues which people think are important to feature in the local plan and perhaps gather some information and views from the people who might not have the time nor inclination to get involved in the more detailed consultation element. Um, so we're still working up the types of questions that would, would feature here, but an example given here is ask people to name of the nine topics, which three are the, the issues that they're most concerned about and want to see addressed, for example. And then throughout the website we're building in space here where we can add in key quotes and information and data around things that are happening in the district, um, measures being taken which are relevant to those 
nine topics. So that is it in a nutshell, if anyone has any questions. No, okay. Oh. Any, uh, suggestion, I've just suggestions or questions. Uh, Councillor Evans has come forward for some, to make some comments. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Bridget, this is all great and I really like all the, the graphics as well. So two questions. Um, how will a wide range of people who you wish to consult know about this website? And is everything going to be online? Uh, so we are working on an engagement strategy at the present. So the aim is that we will use social media, uh, use the council's existing platforms. We'll be using Instagram and Twitter, Facebook um, and LinkedIn to promote the, lo the local plan website and enable people to link through. Uh, we will be using the council's existing um, forums and platforms, so Parish Connect and so on, um, to and, and also writing directly to parish councils and to other interested groups and to anyone who has already registered on, on the existing council website to notify them. Um, alongside that, we're also exploring at the moment um, which of various options we'll be able to do in terms of physical advertising um, around town posters and, and so such or media. Um, sorry, the second question. Sorry, will you remind me? Oh, is it all online? Um, is yes. Sort of opposite, yes, it's um, so we're because of the, the dates of the consultation, which we will, as Councillor Porter said, will run until the 23rd of March. We, we expect there's a reasonable likelihood that the majority of that period will be in lockdown. So we're planning at this stage uh, that the survey and so on will feature online along with all of the information supporting the consultation. Uh, we will hold these events, but yes, they will be online. Um, we're going to ensure there are some printed materials available to be posted out um, to anyone who doesn't have internet access, um, but the, I, we don't think it's safe to be holding face to face events or planning for that to happen. So we're, we're trying to plan very much to make sure it's available for those who can't get online, but um, the majority of the information sharing will be online. Chairman, could I just make a comment? Yes, of course. Um, and I represent um, a rural ward and yeah. I know that um, we've, we've had an issue recently over trying to help children um, with working at home. And I know that many homes, A, don't have internet access or don't have computers. So if you could just bear that in mind, because all the things that you mentioned, like Twitter and Instagram, that will not be available to all these people. So I hear that you're going to you know, try and find ways to reach everybody, but I just wanted to reinforce that from um, my own particular ward. Thank okay. you. Certainly, thanks. Um, we have asked the designers also to make sure that everything that's designed for an online format is capable of being viewed on telephone. So we hope that um, some people who might not have physical devices, laptops and so on might, some of them at least, might still have phone access. So that might help a little, but yeah, I fully appreciate the point. Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid that's in the same vein, smartphones. You know, that's in the same vein, but, I, you know, as long as you're aware of that issue. Thank you. I think, uh, uh, Councillor Evans, I think we're acutely aware of that problem. Um, and we have been saying, uh, um, Mr Fox was saying that, of course, a lot of people, a lot more people are walking now than they were before. And there are some routes that they take that are routes that they use regularly. And that, that's why we're talking about having some uh, some posters as well, going back to the old fashioned sort of plans of posters, but it would be very useful, I think, particularly in rural areas where people are going out walking and, and seeing seeing posters like that. Um, and also as part of our uh, community engagement strategy, which we updated during COVID, there will be the possibility of having paper versions back. Uh, so we do want to we do want to reiterate that it is not just for those people online. It's for everybody. 
Uh, the advantage okay. of the, the, the website is that actually it will ask quick questions as well. So people won't be expected to respond back with 250 page responses on the telephone. <laughs> I think that's very clear. Councillor Horrell. Um, uh, good evening, Chair, and just um, thank you for um, letting me come in here. Um, I want to reiterate the point already made uh, by Councillor Evans, and that is my concern that uh, not that we should not be doing what you're doing uh, with the digital platform, but actually are we uh, then um, excluding uh, particular groups in our community? We already know as a council that we've recently had um, a, a piece of negative feedback from some of our representatives in the TAC group with the housing portfolio and um, how they haven't been able to engage online. Not everyone has the right equipment, which has already been made, or the right skills to be able to do that. And I think we should learn um, from that representative group who we work with consistently, we know them well, and uh, they have made us very aware of that. And uh, I think we need to ensure that this piece of work is accessible by all. And as a consequence of that, I think we have to work extra hard in this situation uh, to think about those other opportunities besides meetings. I agree with you completely uh, that meetings are obviously inappropriate at this time, but I know in my own village we've been putting posters in bus shelters about consultations that have been going on uh, that uh, you have kindly produced at the council. Uh, we have put information out in other published documents that are available. So I think we need to learn from those messages we've had and ensure that uh, we do not exclude uh, those who are uh, limited with machines and limited with um, their software understanding and capability. Uh, thank you, Councillor Porter. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Horrell, do you have any suggestions of other places? Because actually, um, Mr Fox, uh, in our discussion, we talked about bus shelters, actually, although not necessarily many people are catching the buses, they're certainly going past the bus stops and they will see those. But have you got any other suggestions of places where we should be trying to get the, the notices out to? Well, I think I, that history, I think group, history groups, volunteer groups, that sort of thing. Yes, our community support groups who've obviously been a um, established through COVID. Uh, many of them have an email network. Obviously, you've got the Parish Connect and all that goes with parish councillors. You have your councillors. Um, uh, Bridget, you and I talked about that last week on another project. Use your councillors who are um, sending information out into various publications. Uh, we're a, a sort of postal service in our, uh, in our own right um, on emails and, um, and various publications. Uh, we have um, a lot of sites that the council has. We have you know, notices and car parks and the like, and mm -hmm. even though there are less people, um, there are still people parking and, and around town. Uh, we have our windows at the Guildhall um, that uh, can be used for, uh, for posters. So uh, let's go back to some of the old fashioned ways of just as people are, and, and that's just locally here, but obviously Bishop's Waltham, uh, Wickham, Whiteley, they will all have those same outdoor opportunities that you could actually publish this. And I think um, very cost effectively, you could put some of those notices out. But Councillor Porter, I'll have another think about some other organisations and happily send you a note. Um, I think, but I think it's something we all want to pull our knowledge on, don't we? And, very uh, much so. It's very important that if anybody has any group they think is relevant, that they mention it uh, to us in the next few weeks, because we will we do need to write out to people as well as go to the, I think we have more than 15,000 addresses uh, that get the, the regular updates from Winchester City Council and there is the opportunity to sign up to have uh, the specific planning knowledge. So Bridget, um, it's, um, I think we've got uh, Councillor Ferguson and Councillor Thompson still to go. So um, Councillor Ferguson. <clears throat> Um, yes, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, Bridget, for the presentation. Um, I'm really excited about this website. I'm really excited about the, um, particularly the interactive map, um, the fact that I can flip through to different sections, um, the fact that we are going to have um, audio recordings or videos for people to watch rather than asking them to, to 
go through, uh, you know, potentially 100 pages of, of text, um, which we get to do on, on this advisory group. Um, it sort of again comes around from um, what Councillor Horrell and Councillor Evans were saying. I wondered if we had plans of how we engage specific um, age groups or interest groups. So I was thinking particularly of younger people. Um, I know we say we're putting it on Twitter and on Facebook, possibly Instagram. Um, but again, would there be any opportunity to do um, a virtual presentation to an, an interested group in the same way that we do briefings to parish councils? Could we do a virtual briefing to the university students that are with us, for example? Um, also, my second question was going to be around when we're looking at the level of interaction with this website, um, what, if anything, will we do if we find that there's a sort of a bias in the interaction? So it suggests to us there's a geographical bias that everybody, for example, in the towns are interacting with it because it's easy to access. But we find there are certain areas because of the digital connectivity, because of the issues that can't interact. Um, and equally, We've all talked about putting up posters telling people about the consultation. That's all well and good, but it probably still demands that you have internet access to then look at those posters and then go online to interact. So my question is, will there be an opportunity on those posters if I really don't have internet access? Can I get some kind of written material, even though that's bad for the environment? so I can actually go through this and look at it. So lots of interrelated questions there. If you could help, that would be great. Um, Bridget, would you like to answer that one at that point? Because I think that's relevant here. Yes, sure. So um, yes, I quite agree in terms of virtual presentations. The aim is um, we're, we're compiling a list of targeted groups that we think would benefit from their own virtual session. So we want to have sessions available to the whole pub public on all of the topics and then um, at the moment we're thinking we're going to approach schools, the university um, on again covering all topics but slightly tweaking the content perhaps to make it more appropriate um, and other particular groups. Um, so the, the traditional hard to reach groups I think we'll be looking to um, do targeted events. So we will be approaching the organisations with an invitation and to explore whether that's something they'll be interested in getting students to do. Because obviously with the current situation and homeschooling, um, you know, it's a, a more, <laughs> it's more feasible this time around to possibly build that into a school day than it might ordinarily be. Um, in terms of um, geographic bias and the potential to remedy deficiencies and in interaction. Yes, I, I think that probably needs a, a bit of thought, but it, it's we certainly will have the data available to us and we'll be able to get a good understanding of where, you know, what sort of level of engagement there has been with the website. And I think that's the, the benefit of it, that we should have a good understanding of who we've reached um, and the potential to top that up if need be with some targeted focus to gain some views. So once we've done this consultation, the intention is to engage directly with parish councils across the district to discuss the issues again. So there will be the opportunity there. Um, and in terms of um, the posters, the intention is that the posters will include details of where you could gain a hard copy of of the consultation, which will be at the at the council's offices, um, so you could collect from customer services, and there will be a hard copy set of questions there that you could fill out manually and and leave your views. And that that part shouldn't be too long. The questions. Thank you. In fact, I think we will need to also be able to offer to post it out because um, we do need to be able to do that. It would be unreasonable for someone from Wickham or Bishop's Waltham to be driving up just to or come trying to find transport to come up, I think. Um, uh, uh, Mr Fox, did you want to say something? I'm just going to go back to uh, Councillor Thompson, if that's OK with you. Um, if I could just add, Chair, to, oh. to, to what um, Bridget's Connie said. We are, very, 
we are very keen to build on the back of obviously the very good work that was done for Central Winchester and we've learnt a lot as an organisation on obviously good consultation techniques as a result of Central Winchester and in terms of obviously the way that they approached uh, the, their consultation which uh, obviously is just closing they um, put down the customer services uh, telephone number and basically they asked them to send out a copy if obviously somebody couldn't actually get hold of a copy so we are very aware of that um, that obviously we need to make that available and I think Bridget made the comment that we will have a limited print run available to to address that but just to reiterate we are very keen to hear from anybody about good ways to consult with people with groups organizations or locations so please do let us know um, we are very keen to listen about where we can do it we've had a very good discussion internally about what we can do but we're keen to build on the back of that so please do let us know thank you thank you uh, Councillor Thompson. Um, thank you very much, Councillor Porter. Um, actually, Mr Fox has just uh, made the point that I was going to make, which was um, certainly um, for Central Winchester, um, that um, people were encouraged to ring customer services and then uh, put in a request for um, paper copies of the um, consultation. Um, customer services at the moment is, is only open by appointment. Um, and I suspect that's likely to be the case for uh, the length of, <coughs> of this uh, consultation on the local plan. Um, so that really is the, um, you know, I think we need to have a phone number mm. to uh, give, mm. give to people. Um, and the other point I was going to raise was, of course, um, yes, we as local councillors really have a responsibility to try and get the message out. Um, to all our communities that there is a, a really important consultation going on. Um, we all write pieces for um, parish magazines, um, church magazines, all sorts. Um, and I think it is incumbent on us to actually um, uh, highlight the website um, and or the telephone number. Um, so that we do actually get through and we use all the channels we can to uh, publicise uh, this consultation. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we're all agreed that online is great, but we do need to make sure we've done the belt and braces. But we're really hoping that the online will excite people and give them the opportunity to respond, uh, not just onto the whole of the long consultation, but also to get a flavour of what people feel as well. Uh, Bridget, do you want to say anything else to that? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. But yes, that's certainly the aim to make sure we can um, take people's views in the way that they're willing to give them to us. So if, if someone's inclined to get involved by reading a detailed document, great. But if, if they're not inclined to do that, we still want to hear what they have to say. Really, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank Is there you. anything else anybody else wants to say? I've only got, uh, haven't got any more raised hands on this one. No, thank you very much indeed, Bridget. Um, Councillor oh. Porter, sorry, I just haven't. I just had an idea. Um, yeah. We used to have a notice board, I think, in the city centre at St Morris's, and um, that I think was removed as part of the renovation. But that's a very central point there. I wonder if that might be worth reinstating in some uh, format um, as a we can investigate that as yeah. a central location, which many people might pass by. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Porter, I did have my hand up, but it doesn't appear to be registering. It's Councillor Clementson. Uh, Council <coughs> did, did you request to speak, Councillor Clementson? I, how you, are you feeling better, by the way? Um, much better, thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you. I, I, um, it was just a suggestion whether or not supermarkets would be a good, <coughs> excuse me, a good location. You said, let us know, um, a good location to put, put notices. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Right, I think we'll move on now, but thank you very much for those suggestions, greatly appreciated. So uh, the second paper, which is item seven, is the dra draft strategic issues and priorities document. Um, and this uh, paper is opening up the debate on issues which are important to our residents and businesses. Our officers have devised this as they've tried to move seamlessly from the old local plan process to the new one, whatever that may be. The government announced they would be advancing the algorithm figures, which asked Winchester District to provide land for a thousand plus homes a year. And they've introduced the old formula, more or less, which expects us to uh, deliver 692 homes a year. So with the permissions we have in place already, 
This brings the land allocation to space for 2,692 homes. I just want to be clear on this point tonight. This paper is about the way we want to live and work. It does not even attempt to allocate or ask the public to choose specific sites for homes or employment or green space, nor does it seek to. The local plan is about so much more than homes. It's about building communities and the way we live and spend our leisure time. It's about providing employment and transport options and green spaces. And I note uh, Councillor uh, um, Patrick Davis's comment about trains and and boat, uh, trains and buses, and I'll check that. So how do we want to live? How can we plan the district for a low carbon living? Should we be allocating active travel corridors? These are all questions. So I'd like to ask you specifically about the list of priorities that are listed at the beginning. Are they easily understood? Could any be amalgamated or simplified? Are the tables clear? It'd be really helpful to know if there's any more that could be done to make them clearer to new readers. And the issues and options presented for consultation offer the public choices. Their responses will, just, will determine the way we want to see the plan develop. And um, so when the responses are distilled and we move forward to the next stage, I want to be really confident that they feel ownership of this plan. We want the public to feel that it's their district and their plan. So I know that uh, Councillor Ferguson was going to speak briefly and uh, Councillor Fox, uh, no, Mr Fox uh, wants to say some words before we start. So uh, Mr Fox, do you want to say anything else? as an introduction to this piece and then do you want to make your presentation um i think then councillor horrell uh you might like to speak and councillor brook do you want to speak after mr fox has made his presentation yes please yeah that's fine thank you thank you chair um to say we we have um produced this document um it is, if I'm honest, the third version of this document that we prepared because we prepared one, as you know, back in August. Uh, we were then quite happily preparing one with the uh, the new algorithm uh, and we've changed it again to obviously go back to the original figures. But it's not just that. It is very important to say that we have taken on board some very new issues, such as the work that's been undertaken for the vision for Winchester. We've amalgamated and incorporated a number of key findings from that report. And it's very important that we talk about what strategy we want for the local plan, first of all, rather than getting, talking about individual sites. And I do want to stress that point, that it's really important to talk about the strategy and the approach. Hence, while we've done a lot of work on uh, developing the objectives for the local plan and the vision, and we're very keen to obviously uh, have people's views on those particularly important uh, points. So like I say, it is very like, um, there's four different growth options, which we spent a lot of time developing. Um, and like I said, we're very, very keen to have comments on those uh, different ways that we could obviously develop in the future. And I do think that's an important point. We have incorporated the new topic on living well um, in recognition of obviously the lockdown and COVID-19, that obviously it's really important to have green spaces as part of obviously uh, our, our, the way that we live and obviously exercise. And obviously we have incorporated a new uh, point on Greenbelt, fully accepting uh, the comment that was made by uh, Mr Davis about obviously how much detail we go into there on that particular topic. But like I say, I'll stop there, but I'm quite happy to have any questions. I haven't got a presentation as such, Chair. I'm just happy to have any questions uh, raised. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Fox. I'm actually going to ask uh, councillors Bell and Hutchison if they'd like to make their representation at this point. I think it's a relevant point to do that. Councillor Bell, Councillor Hutchison. I'm yes. happy to do that. Right, yes. should, should we take you. Councillor Bell first? Okay, I don't mind who goes first. You go first, okay. Councillor Bell. Lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, um, Thank you for allowing me for this opportunity to speak to your local plan advisory group. I've been involved with such planning over a number of years and very much appreciate the opportunity to contribute to the current debate. I hope by the time this document comes to consultation, we have some certainty about housing numbers required. I hope these numbers have now been confirmed at previous levels and we can proceed with a more measured and sensible approach to strategic planning for housing. 
I'm pleased to welcome the new focus of the Winchester Local Plan going forward. In the last iteration, we argued for minimal acceptable standards of space, natural light, insulation. Some were accepted, some fell on barren ground, but now it appears that what we were arguing for several years ago is now a given. <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> hallelujah, whatever. I'm very pleased with the generality of what's been proposed, but that is not my main purpose this evening. My main purpose is to highlight the very special characteristics of land south of Winchester and the need to protect these characteristics. The government has not made our task easy by proposing radical changes to the planning system and the proposing and, and proposing exceptional targets for housing numbers and then rowing back on both numbers and reforms. The government has in effect wasted the time and efforts of planning officers up and down the country who are valiantly trying to accommodate the worst of what was proposed and then finding that it wasn't. I fully support the carbon neutrality and sustainability targets of this new local plan. It is fair that every proposal going forward is assessed against our sustainability targets. The new document addresses some of the changes since the Lowe's local, local plan. I would argue that areas such as Hursley still fit within a rural areas brief as articulated in MTRA 3 and 4. However, these rural areas adjacent to Winchester town suffer an additional pressure and deserve a more specific attention in this local plan. To focus on the area south of Winchester, the area that has come to be called Royal, Royal Down, we, Hursley Parish Council, Oliver's Battery Parish Council, Compton and Shawford Parish Council are fundamentally opposed to this massively out of scale development for our area. But this does not mean that Hursley, I'm speaking specifically for Hursley, that Hursley PC and indeed other parishes are not actively looking at solutions that will assist small scale, small scale development in our parish areas. In fact, we've been in discussions with a number of local landowners to arrive at possible ways forward, which do not include such a massive and destructive development. It's important to understand that our proposals are not nimbyism. We have positive proposals to provide multiple options. We therefore implore the local planning team at Winchester to take account of these very real and very positive submissions. We will work with you to provide local housing for local residents, but it will not include the Royal Down proposals as currently published. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Bell. Councillor Hutchison, would you like to say something? Yes, thank you very much indeed for giving me the opportunity to say a few words. And first of all, I'd really like to welcome this paper, which I think is excellent, and particularly the focus on the climate emergency and other priorities, as well as some of the elements that have emerged through the work that we've been doing on the vision for Winchester. Um, and in particular, the concept of the 15 minute city, which I think we should really refer to as the 15 minute town, neighborhood, village, it's all of those things, it's not just the city. At the last uh, meeting of the local advi plan advisory group, reference was made to the fact that the town forum was going to be doing the Winchester element of this um, plan and we've been doing quite a lot of work particularly on the vision and to carry the vision forward uh, one of the recommendations from the vision is the need for mapping and preparing a plan for the town which will be embedded within the local plan so that is the next stage of work that we hope to be carrying out um, but at the moment we haven't discussed the four strategic growth options but of course Winchester is key for all of them. But I just wanted to clarify one thing within the paper and then make uh, six comments that I suppose refer specifically to Winchester. The first is that the um, Town Forum initiated the vision work. It initiated the vision work, which was a vision for Winchester Town. That was all of the built up area 
including the surrounding, immediately surrounding areas. It wasn't confined to the five parishes that make up the town forum. And I think that's a really important point that we need to be clear in going forward, that it was neither just the town forum parishes, nor was it the settlement boundary, but it was very much looking at the built up areas, which therefore would include uh, Kings Barton, John Moore's Barracks and things like that. But having clarified that, there were just sort of six points which I feel uh, were perhaps missing, but really relate primarily to Winchester. Um, the first one I'd like to mention is promoting mixed use development, which is absolutely crucial to the concept of the 15 minute city, town or neighbourhood. The paper is very heavily focused, and I understand why, on the need for new homes and housing numbers, because that's what the government target is about. But in terms of making the place work for people, it's very important that we look at um, the context of development in smaller developments and how they relate and how we achieve the 15 minute concept within existing neighbourhoods, as well as areas that are going to be changed. And linked to that, uh, there's no reference to spatial plans. I very much appreciated what Mr Shields said with regard to uh, Bishop Swarthen, because essential for gaining support for develop development is knowing where it may go, and also knowing about the importance of the quality of development and infrastructure, access, streets and roads. These are the important issues that affect people, and I hope will come out as we develop more of the spatial plans, which are crucial to this. And this is particularly important with regard to taking the vision work for Winchester Town forward, um, as is suggested, but also very much key to the white paper, which is very much focused on spatial planning and master planning. Another element that is really important for Winchester is regeneration and its role in contributing to providing homes, as well as improving the built form of areas and neighbourhoods. It contributes and may contribute really importantly to carbon reduction, but it would cover many brownfield sites, as well as improving the more deprived areas of the town, which is hugely important. Again, something that doesn't come up uh, when you're just looking for sites in another context. The paper is heavily focused, and I understand why, um, on the Sheila sites, but it doesn't refer to land and sites owned by Winchester <coughs> City Council and Hampshire County Council, nor does it refer to other socially owned land which may become for, coming forward for development. I'm thinking particularly of land owned by the hospital, uh, the prison and indeed the barracks. But I'd also like to highlight one other element not very much gone into in the um, looking for sites and looking for housing, and that is the reference to new council housing and council-led housing developments, which are really important in considering one of the objectives of the overall plan, which is to provide homes for all, and particularly to focus on homes for lower income people. Um, many people who work in Winchester, who have secure jobs in local authority and others, can't afford to live in the town. And I think a key part of our work, and particularly the council-led housing side, is to make sure that we can um, address that side of <coughs> housing development. And finally, I'd like to refer to the fact um, one of the objectives of the plan, which I thoroughly support, is to promote active travel. And particularly references made repeatedly to walking and cycling. This will require working very closely with Hampshire County Council. And I suppose my query here is a question. How is this going to be addressed? in taking the plan forward? How are we going to work effectively with the County Council? Uh, the movement strategy was initiated four or five years ago, but is moving incredibly slowly. And there's no evidence yet of any change in the direction uh, of providing better infrastructure for walking and cycling. So uh, it's really a question as to how this, which I thoroughly support, is actually going to be delivered. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hutchison, and uh, thank you to Councillor Bell as well. And hopefully we can address some of the questions you've raised in your uh, in your question, in your 
uh, speeches uh, in our conversation in a moment with um, Mr Fox. Um, uh, Councillor Ferguson, did you want to um, discuss uh, the matter of the, the priorities for employment? <clears throat> Um, yes, thank, thank you, Chair. Yes. Um, I, I just wanted to um, let the advisory group know and members of the public um, is that um, in looking at the number of strategic economic objectives that have been identified, they go on to about three and a half pages. Um, with com Through conversations and working with officers, senior officers in both the planning and the economy team, it's clear that we are able to refine and refocus those. So um, some of them can be consolidated, others can be scaled down. So it's really just let the public know that the essence will remain, but they will just be um, more refined and um, there will just be fewer of them. But all of the factors that have been raised in those objectives will be retained. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Thank you. I think. Um, we have discussed this and just realised that actually it made a document even longer when actually if we thought about it, we could refine it. But it is really important that the public know what our economic drivers are for this local plan as well. So thank you. That's really helpful. Um, and we will see those, I presume, at when it's published for Cabinet? Um, <clears throat> um, yes. Or when it goes out? Yes, that's what I've been told that when it goes to Cabinet is that um, next week. Yes, we can do an update paper on that. Yes, yeah. that's brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. That's really helpful. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rutter, you wanted to say something. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Hutchison briefly touched on this, um, but um, my concern is, is on page 68. Um, proposed changes um, included in the white paper. One of the things that we were most proud of in the last local plan was that we had agreed that 40% of all new developments would um, contribute to either 40% towards low, uh, affordable housing or 40% of the development would be affordable housing. Um, that commitment has been watered down over the years by the government. Um, but page 68 I find really alarming um, the, and it, I think it will have a crucial impact on affordable housing levels, both um, local authority provided council housing and also um, housing association housing. When do we know when any decision will be made about the proposal here um, and how can we influence the level of the proposed levy, which is going to take the place of um, <laughs> Of, of contributions for affordable housing from developers. Do we have any idea about that? Because it, it is actually, you know, vital that, that we have some information about this because it, it basically would wipe out all our affordable housing at one one blow if it wasn't set at the right level. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr Fox, would you like to respond to that? Do you have any influence? I think that's the question. <laughs> I think the answer to that, uh, Chair, is I'd love to have a lot of influence, <laughs> but I'm certainly talking to the right people to try and make sure we have got influence. Uh, but um, in terms of obviously uh, Councillor Rutter's question, the affordable housing uh, threshold will be determined by, uh, at the later stage in the local plan process, when we know obviously which sites we've got and we do work through the what's called the local plan viability assessment to assess what level that will be and that will determine the threshold that we've got for affordable housing but in terms of obviously how the government is intending to change um, SIL um, obviously at the moment there is no uh, information about when they're going to come up with any kind of response to the white paper um, at the moment uh, they've gone quiet but that's not to say that they're busy in the background uh, obviously coming up with the change to the white paper but we do understand it's been slightly delayed so at the moment unfortunately chair it's watched this space and we will keep members updated as and when we know what's going on but uh, at the moment the government has gone quiet on that thank you I think it's very clear that we aren't the only district in the country we're not the only district in the county making the comment that uh, this does put many of the services that are come with uh, properties or employment, it does put them at risk. Uh, um, and so I think it is um, 
it's been part of everybody's response so far. Uh, Mr Finch, you wanted to make a comment? Uh, yes, Chair, um, you might have to bear with me. I've got some internet connectivity problems, ironically, uh, but I don't, can you hear me all right? Yes, yes, yes we can. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Mr Finch has disappeared. He had no electricity. Hello, hello. can you hear me? Hello. Right? Can you hear now? Can you hear us now? Uh, I presume everybody else is in the same boat that they can hear when he introduces, but not anything further. <clears throat> yes, that's true, Councillor Porter. Right. OK, thank yes. you. Um, uh, I, Mr Fox, I don't presume you have any idea what he's going to be saying, so I think we'll have to move on and then we'll come back to uh, Simon when he's turned back up on, on site. Um, does anybody else wish to speak at this point? Um, uh, Councillor Clemenson, unfortunately you're not actually part of the meeting, are you? Have you come to represent somebody else? No, not at all. It was just I had a suggestion, uh, Councillor right. Porter, that was okay. all. Um, well, unfortunately, because you're not part of the no, uh, delegation, so. certainly uh, we can have a conversation afterwards and, and make sure that we've taken that into account. I think we're meeting on Friday morning. Oh no, you're not going to be there. I'm not going to we'll, have a, we'll have a conversation. There's no afterwards. worries. So That's fine. Thank you. Uh, um, Simon, are you going to try another try? No, no obviously not. Uh, Councillor Horrell and then Councillor Brook. Um, Councillor uh, Porter, thank you for allowing me to address the uh, the group this evening. I have um, several comments to make about the issues and priorities document uh, that we have before us, which is most welcome. Um, as you know, I, I think it's long overdue, so I'm very pleased to see it. But um, I was disappointed to um, note that a document of such significance was not issued until Wednesday of last week. I appreciate you extended the public speaking opportunity, but there were obviously competing priorities at the council, but this piece of work is one of the most important the council's responsible for, and I hope that we'll be able to give the right resources so that um, these documents can come out in good time for everyone to review them. There's been much mentioned this evening, Council Porter, of the Winchester vision to 2030, and there's a suggestion in the document that this should be a base for a district vision. I would say quite um, strongly that I wholly disagree with that approach. Um, I welcome the fact that the city has prepared um, their vision, but actually the district should um, prepare its own vision, uh, that we shouldn't actually just take that as a given and springboard to the wider area. I noticed that many people credited with the vision um, in the Winchester document are actually very Winchester centric. And I hope that this uh, group will be encouraged to give the broader group across the district the opportunity to produce their own vision, vision if that is required. I, I also see in the document Brownfield is featured. And as you know, um, we've been advocating that we should build on Brownfield first um, as a first approach in this plan. Uh, it is therefore crucial in my view that the documents are up to date and lists of all available sites known. I looked up on the current documents referenced in this paper and I question why there are just 18 sites listed in the 2020 version. Surely we must have more and this is an essential piece of information. Perhaps it's going to be updated, but I'm sure it will be a matter of some significance for all of us as we look at the strategic direction for this plan. I also raised earlier today my concerns, and you've heard them, Councillor Porter, so I apologise, about the statement of common ground which you've committed to with the Partnership for South Hampshire. Uh, the recently published white paper, Planning for the Future, recommends abolishing the need for the duty to cooperate. And, but you may say it's better for us to keep talking to our neighbouring authorities and that will produce a better outcome for all of us. But I really couldn't understand why we'd extended the decision 
to agree a joint strategy that will propose the scale and location of development needs of the Solon area and that this, the partnership will drive that discussion around potential strategic development opportunity areas. We know that uh, the partnership for South Hampshire doesn't have the same uh, requirements to consult and I heard officers say earlier today it was better to keep talking but I do hope that we can commit completely that should any of these documents be brought forward that Winchester will have its own opportunity to discuss these very significant pieces of work and whether we are committed to them in any shape or form. Uh, I note on that um, statement of common ground that at the moment Winchester is the only net um, uh, uh, provider of homes to the uh, area uh, that covers the uh, array of uh, authorities. And I'm just concerned we're putting ourselves in play to provide homes for a broader area than we would naturally wish to uh, support. Um, the other thing that I hope this group can do, and I appreciate all the work that the planning team have put into this, and I, uh, I hear Mr Fox say this is version three, and I'm, um, I, I know what a significant um, effort has been made, but I do think there are some gaps in the current document and trust that we as a group will be able to ask that these are enhanced before publication. Um, I would suggest that some of the lack of economic focus, uh, particularly on employment sites in this document is concern, uh, is of concern. Um, Whiteley, for example, hardly gets a mention in the document, although it's a very significant settlement in our area. And I would hope that we as a group can discuss this for, further with the portfolio holder. Maybe Councillor Ferguson can advise why we haven't uh, really focused on this in, in the way that I think we all need. Why would we build houses when actually there are going to be limited places for people to work uh, close to where they are uh, residing? There were a number of specific studies in the document as well, Councillor Porter. For example, there was the mention of the Green Blue Infrastructure Framework, uh, but I was unable to find the specific briefs and objectives for some of these pieces of evidence gathering. And I think there'll be lots of residents who want to know and understand these. So please, can you help us to understand where these documents are logged and how we can access their progress? Um, there was also reference in the document to settlement gaps and the need to revise them, which I know for some communities will be a highly contentious issue. Um, a very important subject, but again, there was little information about the how and the what for that revision. Uh, likewise, settlement hierarchies, again, uh, they're mentioned, but uh, for the average person, we will need to help them to access that data and understand uh, the significance of it. And again, the detail wasn't particularly clear in this document. And maybe that's the intention that we then have to go to other places to understand this. Um, and, 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 and finally, a couple of other points. Um, there was no real mention of the work that I think we do have to do, and again, the officers will correct me, um, around sites that are in the current plan, but um, have not come to fruition in the last plan period. Um, Bushfield Camp is one of those sites and an important one. Um, does have uh, an old um, army in or had an old army encampment on it. Uh, where are we going to pick those types of issues up so that people can understand um, their uh, their impact? So how does the last plan um, and the lack of delivery of some elements influence the future plan? And like a previous speaker, I am uh, really concerned. Uh, that uh, about the little mention of the movement strategy in um, this document. For me, that strategy has to work hand in glove with the local plan is a really important feeder. And I see limited progress on that um, at this time. And I think it is an area that we, we should all be concerned about. We have all agreed it. I, I hope that we can embrace it. And how does that in get included in the, the local plan? 
So, uh, Councillor Porter, a number of things there, which um, I'd be happy to discuss further with um, uh, Mr Fox and his team, if that's helpful. Um, but some very significant pieces of information that I think uh, we as a group and indeed the general public will want some uh, further clarity on and um, access to so that we can all help to inform the debate. Thank you, Councillor Porter. You're muted, Councillor You're muted, Councillor Porter. Porter. <laughs> um, I'm just going to touch on two or three of those points, uh, Councillor Horrell, and then I shall ask um, Mr Fox to just continue. Um, I'm just going to ask him to, to, to talk to you about brownfield land in a moment. You say, surely we must have more or we just don't have more. That's the, that's, that's the clear issue. Um, and you mentioned about statement of common ground and uh, the new plans are abolishing the duty to cooperate. Well, of course, at the moment, we don't have a copy of any new plan. So at the moment there is a duty to cooperate and we believe that that's the current position. Uh, if that does change, then we are in a position to change our uh, the way our method. But it is very important to say that at the end of the day, the people that make the decision about the housing numbers in our plan are us, not, not push. I think that's very clear and, and we would have to agree anything that we wanted to do. Um, the um, Whiteley, I will leave to Councillor Ferguson, if I may. Um, uh, and the settlement gaps, I think that's the whole point of this consultation, that there are communities we know who are looking at those settlement gaps and are thinking about whether they're the right places. So this is about encouraging uh, local communities to be involved uh, through local neighbourhood plans or by talking to our planning officers about what they want to see. Um, and uh, you mentioned about no real mention of uh, work around sites in the current plan in terms of deliverability. Our officers have already been having those conversations with those uh, developers who haven't delivered as we had expected. Um, so that's something else. Uh, and then you have also mentioned about the uh, movement strategy. Um, I know that uh, Councillor Todd has been working hard on that. Um, and uh, we have a couple of meetings about specific sites in the next few weeks. Um, we are also um, trying to make sure that we uh, have to deal with the COVID uh, emergency actions as well as, as others. But the Winchester Movement Plan is just for the city, not for the whole community. I think it, it has to be said. Um, Mr Fox, would you like to say anything? And, and Mr Finch, are you back online? Mr Fox first. I hope so, Chair, yes. Shall I, shall I, or should we go for Mr Finch first, just in case? We no, let's go for it while I'm still here, although some of you yeah. may think that's not no, no bad thing that I got cut off. <laughs> OK, uh, apologies. It never normally lets me down tonight, of course, it has. Um, that's certainly ironic. Um, yeah, just a couple of bits to pick up on, on, on a number of the speakers, including what Councillor Horror was talking about. Um, I think in terms of the vision, um, obviously take that on board. Um, it, it, it was a vision produced, um, I think, as one of the speakers said earlier. Um, was centred around Winchester. I think all we're saying really there is there were some a number of themes that came out of that, uh, including concepts like the 15 minute city, et cetera, um, that we can certainly um, look at in the context of Winchester City and the surrounding area as well. But some of the principles about engagement, even you know, to the point of using the new website that you had the trailer for earlier, um, all of those sorts of things were, were things which we think, you know, we could use a little bit wider um, than, than just um, yeah, uh, the, the vision for Winchester concentrating on the town, but uh, understood, you know, that that's that's the area of focus that it uh, that it had. Um, also, um, in terms of duty to cooperate, I think the point was made earlier that um, that uh, it still exists at the present time, so we have to to plan for that until such time as that that obligation is removed. And obviously, being part of push helps us to do that. But ultimately, any decisions are decisions that would be taken for uh, us as uh, when we make decisions actually on the form that the plan actually takes. Um, am I still with you or, or can you still hear that? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Sam. Yes, we can. You're still there. Still there. Oh, good. OK, so uh, it's, it's still glitching this end, so I wasn't quite... Uh, Quite sure. Um, I think that's really all I want to say. And also just echoing what was about the Winchester movement strategy. Clearly is an important document. As you know, I, I worked on that with colleagues from the County Council. Um, there are some exciting developments. It does take um, a while to launch those things. I think 
Councillor Hutchinson said it was four or five years ago. It's only only a couple of years, but it, it may feel like longer in the current climate. But certainly things like Voltex, etc., coming forward are all things that we can work into at the local plan and promoting you know, buses, trains, and also um, uh, active transport as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Mr Fox, would you like to talk specifically about the green-blue infrastructure point? Yeah, thank you, Chair. If, if I can, I'll just quickly talk about the brownfield oh, issue. The brownfield, um, yeah, thank because, you. Because <laughs> uh, I know that's a very topical issue. Um, for those uh, of you who are very familiar with the MPPF, the National Planning Framework, I'd encourage you to look at the glossary of that document, which probably is an overlooked uh, section of the MPPF, which actually includes a definition of what a brownfield site is. Now, you can tell when you look at that glossary that it has been uh, looked at by lawyers, and that's no respect, disrespect to our lawyers, um, but it does include a very clear definition of what a brownfield site is. Now, there is that misunderstanding, I guess, about what a brownfield site is. Um, and uh, there are a number of sites that I'm very familiar with um, in and around the city that one would assume would be a brownfield site, but they're not actually brownfield. So I would encourage you to uh, have a look at that definition of brownfield sites. We do have to produce a brownfield register every year. And I think Councillor Horrell actually referred to uh, the figure that's in the brownfield register. And I do think there's also, like I say, you need to start with a definition in the MPPF of what a brownfield site is. Um, but we are doing a call for sites for brownfield sites as part of this consultation. And I would like to make it very clear that we are very, very keen to look at brownfield sites wherever we can. Um, but knowing which, as I do, there's, there's not a lot of scope in terms of brownfield sites that are out there that meet the definition of the MPPF. So I would encourage you to look at that definition. In terms of the green blue infrastructure, that's a piece of work that we're just literally trying to finalise at the moment. Uh, we've been working with land use consultants and that sets out the baseline for the blue green infrastructure. And that's going to be an interactive uh, kind of strategy that's going to be available for people to look at and to comment on as part of the consultation. We're just literally trying to finish that at the moment. And in terms of obviously um, Councillor Horrell's point about no mention of sites that are in the current local plan, if, um, and I do appreciate it's a long read, if you get towards the appendices in the actual strategic issues and priorities document, we have gone through the policies in the existing local plan and we have made a comment. Now, the clear thing that I want to make clear is um, each of the existing local plan policies need to be assessed on the level playing field in terms of whether or not they are still deliverable. And that will be a key test at the local planning examination. So any site um, that's obviously included an allocation in the local plan still needs to kind of wipe its face in terms of demonstrating that it is still deliverable. And we will be looking at that at the next stage of the work, but we've not yet started it. As Councillor Porter indicated, we've had some discussions with some of the developers, but that work is still ongoing. And like I say, it's the next version of the local plan, we will need to demonstrate that those sites are still deliverable. And that's a key test that will be need to uh, meet at the local plan. Um, examination. Um, so I will stop there, Council Porter, but happy to answer any further questions. Thank you. Um, perhaps we should include in our glossary, our own glossary, the definition of brownfield sites as from in PPF. Perhaps we should make sure we include a, a description of what green blue infrastructure is um, and windfall and possibly even the Winchester Movement Study, because a lot of people think of that as the district's movement study, but it is actually the town or the city's movement study. Um, do you want to have an attempt at describing the brownfield sites from the NPPF description or would you like me to try and get it up and bring it forward for us all? I think the safest thing would be to actually refer to the actual definition rather than rely on my memory uh, chair but uh, like I say it's very, very clear um, what a brownfield site is. Um, and obviously, uh, there's been a lot of case law, all I can say, is in terms of brownfield sites. Um, yeah, I'm just getting it up now, actually. Uh, pages and pages of glossary. I have it, um, Councillor Porter, if you want it. <laughs> right, I'm just getting there now. Um, Registers of previously developed land that local planning authorities consider to be appropriate for residential development. 
having regard to criteria in the Town and Country Planning Act of 2017, local planning authorities will be able to trigger a grant of permission in principle for residential development on suitable sites in their register where they follow the required procedures. And then brownfield land is, is described as previously developed land, but that in, uh, in the sense of, I just want uh, Mr Fox to confirm to me, that isn't necessarily uh, properties that are uh, properties with um, gardens that currently we would develop out. Can you explain that part of it as well, um, Mr Fox? He's gone. Um, here, Chair. Um, I've actually got the definition. I've got a good old fashioned paper copy in front of me. So right. uh, <laughs> uh, if I read out the definition, I think in the MPPF. It's the previous development. Previous to develop land. Mm. So it, it, just bear with me, it's quite long. Land which is or was occupied by a permanent structure, including the curtilage of development land, although it should not be assumed that the whole curtilage should be developed and any associated surface infrastructure. This excludes, and that's the key word, land that is or was occupied by agricultural forestry buildings land that was to be, that has been developed by mineral extraction or waste disposed by landfill where provision for the restoration has been, been made through the development management procedures land in built up areas such as residential gardens so remember the word exclude um, parks um, recreation grounds and allotments and land that was previously developed where the remains of the permanent structural fixture of surface has blended into the landscape so that is very clear that it does not include residential um, gardens. And I think that point came across very clearly in the white paper. For those of you who remember when we were commenting on the white paper, the government made it very clear that uh, it excludes um, kind of people's gardens. And so as a result, we have relatively few true brownfield sites. Yeah, That's correct. You. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Councillor Brooke, you wanted to speak. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, thank you for allowing me to do this. And thank you for allowing this to start at six o'clock this evening because it has started at five previously. And with the hours I've been doing of late, I wouldn't have made it on time. So thank you for that. Um, so thank you. I'm, I'm very pleased to see the um, options paper coming forward today. Um, but before I comment on that, I just wanted to make reference to um, what was um, spoken about earlier with regard to the government consultation and that the government have completely wasted everybody's time by um, changing the way that they had proposed to do things in that. And I just wanted to say I hope that that um, that um, this um, administration wouldn't be afraid to listen and completely change the flow of things if that's the way the feedback went, because the, the scathing attacks on completely changing the way we're doing things and wasting people's times because they've listened and acted on that, I think is a worry. So I just wanted to confirm that this administration is open to changing the flow if that was the way that the consultation went. Um, so moving on from that, um, I support Councillor Hull's comments regarding whether the city centre um, focus should be a basis for the district vision. Um, the needs of our city um, as, as mentioned, doesn't necessarily represent the needs of the rural community. So um, I absolutely support um, what Mr Fox and um, uh, mentioned earlier and, and you, Councillor Porter, about putting out the Winchester vision for people to see so they are actually aware of what it is and how that would affect them. I'd like to ask whether the administration has considered methods to ensure that once the housing is allocated through a local plan, it could support and encourage the developers to build as planned to meet the annual targets particularly with the current climate, meeting building targets will be a challenge. So any support we could give would be no doubt welcomed. And I wondered whether um, the 2018-2019 um, targets had been met on this. So we're already at a good starting point going forwards in this local plan, or whether we're already behind on our housing allocations, putting greater pressure on us moving forwards. I also wanted to raise the issue of economic allocations as it would be more important than ever to seek people's input on the way things have changed over the past 12 months. Um, the paper makes reference to park and rides um, and Councillor Todd often talks about um, having places where you can cycle to 
and then catch public transport. But I saw no reference of that sort of thing in this paper. So I wondered if that's also something that should be included in issues and options or if that would be included elsewhere in another way. Um, I welcome the thoughts on page 67, looking for sites for renewable energy. My concern would be the land value would be significantly less for this purpose than for building. And I wonder what thoughts there are around encouraging this um, and people to come forward for that purpose, even though it might cost them. Um, there's many questions within the consultation about carbon neutrality. And while I absolutely welcome that and that we should be um, at every opportunity seeking input from our residents to try and um, improve carbon neutrality or have additional ideas. There are some really confusing questions, I think, in general for the consultation. For example, on page 71, it says what indicators in the local plan can we use to monitor carbon neutrality? I think unless you are really invested in carbon neutrality, if you're just a lay person, that's the type of question that would just confuse people and put people off. So I wonder if in order to engage people's views properly, we could perhaps rephrase some of those questions. Anyway, I thank you for bringing this forward today. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Councillor Brooke. And uh, that's just exactly the sort of issue that it's really helpful when someone else reads through that they may uh, come forward with us. We'll, we'll relook at some of those. Um, I uh, take the point you made at the beginning. Um, I don't think you would have heard me suggesting that any change in direction for planning is a waste of time. Certainly, it's always good to try new methods. And we were very keen, even as this started, to take up some of the positives from the uh, suggestions that came forward. I think all we're asking, or I'm personally asking for, is that clarity, because I think it's um, it can be very expensive and time wasting to have two running side by side. But I think uh, Mr Fox and Mr Finch have done their absolute, and the, the whole team have done their absolute best in trying to make sure that uh, whatever work is going forward now it can be used for either sort of plan and so it won't be wasted in any way, in any shape or form. And uh, as you know, we've always been very keen to make sure the mapping process makes this whole thing much more open for the general public rather than something that only the really the ones in the know could do. Um, thank you very much indeed as well for the comment about the vision. I think it, it is important to make sure that that vision will be available so people can read it. So they see if they identify it for where they live or whether they think it is purely something for the city or perhaps for other built up areas. I think that's a very good point. Um, and uh, I will ask um, Mr Fox if he's got any other comments he wanted to make on that. I think the uh, the main one, which I will pick up uh, on Councillor Brook made about um, Obviously, we, we can allocate sites and we did make a uh, response to the white paper in terms of obviously methods that the government could mm -hmm. consider to make sure that developers actually build what we want them to build when we want them to build them. We suggested in the response to the white paper that um, obviously they uh, once the site's got planning permission, you could start charging developers council tax and things like that. And we do we do feel strongly about that, um, as with the councillor, that there needs to be incentives. Obviously, we can only do so much. Um, but we have responded to that uh, point as part of our consultation to the white paper. And obviously we await uh, the outcome of that consultation to see what the government uh, will actually do to encourage developers to actually build uh, on the sites when we want them to build. So, uh, so I do think that's a really important point. Um, in terms of renewable energy, we do think that's a really important call for sites. And I'm very pleased that you're supportive of that. Um, and uh, like I say, that we will make it clear that obviously we are looking for sites and where we're looking for sites because I do think that's really important in terms of where the grid connection is, what type of site it is, is it for your own generate, uh, own renewable energy generation in terms of a farm or something like that. But like I say, we are trying to make that clear, but we do think that's an important call for sites. So we welcome that. Thank you. Um, Mr Fox, would you like to comment, um, uh, Councillor Brooke asked about the, um, the number of properties that have been built in the last couple of years and we've recently had the monitoring report. Would you like to comment on that at all? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah. So we produce every year what's called an authority monitoring report that's available on our website and that monitors um, a whole range of things in terms of the existing uh, local plans, in terms of how we're progressing with them. It includes information on um, how we're doing with the five year housing land supply that many of you be aware of. And we are still on target in terms of obviously having a five year land supply. 
Um, it also monitors success or otherwise of the existing policies. So I would encourage you to have a look at that document. There's a wealth of information that goes into that. It looks uh, across the year. It does go from the 31st of March to the 1st of April. So there is a slight time lag in terms of how we can get that information all collated together. But it's a really important document to have a look at in terms of what progress we have. So if anybody's not familiar with that document, I would strongly encourage you to have a look at it. We've changed the format of it this year to make it a bit simpler and easier to understand. Uh, so like I say, we'd welcome comments on that as well. Thank you. Uh, perhaps, Mr Fox, we could send it out to all members. I think it'd be really useful for the whole council to know uh, how it goes and, and also where actually the volume of houses uh, does actually get delivered. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got some very big sites which have potential for delivering very large numbers, but at the moment they aren't delivering the, the sort of numbers that actually our smaller sites are delivering. So that would be really helpful for the, for the uh, perhaps with a summary, a quick summary document so that people understand which pages to look at that's, that might be relevant to their to their particular areas. Yeah, that would we be could... really helpful. Thank you. Yes, not a problem. I think it's the knowledge that, that councillors need to have in order to to have to be able to help their communities about how they can uh, support their communities through the local plan process. That'd be that'd be good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ferguson and then Councillor Evans. Or actually, could I just go for Councillor Evans first? Because I know that she has to go off to another meeting. Councillor Evans. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I do have to go to another meeting, but I was hoping we were heading towards the end. Um, here I am adding to the length. Um, just a, a, a selection of four random points. Um, you did ask about the, the way that the document was set out. And this is just for the officers to consider that if we look at page 15, which goes on to page 16, two of the columns are not used at all. And so you've got to plough your way down a very narrow column vertically. And there are other examples of that, page 76 and page 97. And wouldn't it be an idea to shorten those columns where they've got nothing to say so that you don't have to keep reading down? I found that actually a quite a difficult read. Um, could we just check on page 38 the accuracy of the statement about the west of Waterloo Bill? Um, where we say the site is now called Newlands. Not sure that's totally correct. Um, some of West Waterlooville is, of course, in Denmead, and um, I, I would just quite like, I don't want the answer today, but could, could we just check that? And then, as Mr. Fox said, on page 29, are you knowing? I mean, no, it's probably cancelled to read, but um, his light is flashing. Um, but on page 29, um, the policies there are the ones that are development management policies, and I know you're going to be looking at those. Um, with my chair of planning hat on, it is MTRA 4 that gives councillors on the committee a lot of problems. I'm quite clear about it, but we had one at the last committee where people were doubting that policy. And finally, and I don't need an answer on that today either, but um, could I just check that all the questions that we've got at the end, are those questions that we're going to see on this new website? Because there's loads of questions after each section, but it's unclear to me anyway, what we should do with the answers. And that's it, Chairman. Um, I'll just wait for the answer to that and then I do have to go. Thank you. OK. Um, Mr Fox, would you like to respond or do you want uh, uh, Bridget to respond to that? I think well, in terms of um, the last point about the questions, we have included them for completeness in the document. They will be separately on the council system called citizen space um, in terms of how you can respond to them. We are very keen to make sure that 
if somebody's only interested in a specific topic, they can dip into system space and only respond to that specific topic. So it's currently being designed at the moment to enable people to do that because we appreciate not everybody wants to answer every single question. So we want to basically make it in a matrix style so that people can actually only respond to the questions that they want to respond. As my colleague Bridges has mentioned, there will be polls on the website as well. But the idea is that the questions will be uh, signposted to citizen space um, where they, all the questions will be, but you're better dip in and dip out in terms of the topics that you're interested in. The other point that was about layout, uh, and in fact, I think uh, Councillor Ferguson partly addressed that in the uh, conversations earlier, but we could certainly look at whether it would be better to do those in landscape layout to make it easier to read as you go down the columns. We can certainly look at that. And it was interesting, the conversation about MTRA4, I think that's certainly about delivery, deliverability of a plan, um, and that's important too. And I know, Councillor Evans, you've uh, sent in some, some um, capital, some punctuation and editing man, uh, points that uh, need to be corrected. And uh, we've taken- Well, yeah, sorry about that, but I wouldn't- No, it's always good to have those. It's always good to have them. <laughs> thank you. It's the and we can rely on languages, I'm afraid. Anyway, I will leave so, the meeting now, but thank you very thank much. Thank you very much <laughs> indeed. Thank you. Um, uh, and Councillor Ferguson. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just really wanted to come back on a couple of points that Councillor Horrell had made um, regarding the um, employment space and the sort of, um, to what extent we need to emphasise the need to make sure that we have enough employment in sustainable locations um, through the planning process and through this plan. Um, I think in the objectives we do make that very clear um, that we are aiming to provide new offices and workspace in easily accessible locations and to protect, and this is important, the existing offices and workspaces that we already have that are in sustainable locations because with the new changes in the planning rules where we can have a change of class from workspace to residential, we need to be careful that we don't lose those important employment spaces. Um, we also point out that we want to make sure that employment is based around sustainable transport links and to reduce the need to travel to work. And within the uh, sort of COVID framework, the other issue that we've picked up is that we also need to reflect when we're looking at employment land, the ongoing changes to the way in which people work. So one of the things we, we need to stress through the plan also is that um, we must also make sure that in terms of infrastructure, we look at digital connectivity. Um, Mr Finch's own troubles this evening suggest how important that is going forward. Um, when I look at the document, I do see it refers to Whiteley and Waterloo Bill. Um, and in fact, um, it does say on page 10, that on page 11, that when we look at the three key sectors, we look at Whiteley and Waterloo View um, as a sort of a, a separate sector to the city and the market towns and villages. And we do talk about the need on page 39 to make sure that um, given those new developments that have been, are being built, there are the three and a half thousand houses at Whiteley, the three thousand at Waterlooville, um, that they also provide for their communities in terms of employment opportunities and infrastructure and community facilities. And I'm very keen that as those developments take shape, that the land that's already been allocated for employment within those actually is used for employment opportunities and there's no sort of um, sort of reduction in that in any way. Uh, we did comment, and it's a conversation I'd had with Mr Fox, that the view is that we don't believe that there is any likely to be any opportunity to um, increase the volume of houses in that area. However, what is good is that the sustainable transport links linking the housing development, particularly with, um, Whiteley, with the Whiteley Shopping Centre and the Whiteley Business Park is already being built so that people can get from one to the other. 
So that sort of fulfills that green, um, the climate emergency that threads through the local plan, making sure that development is sustainable going forward. So I you know I welcome all of that. Um, one of the questions that I often ask is, we call for employment sites and um, we don't often have that many coming forward. Often we have res more residential sites coming forward. And it also echoes something that um, Mr. Shield said about Bishop's Waltham. Um, we might like to have employment sites in certain areas, but we somehow have to um, get those to come forward in the right place. And there often is a mismatch between the two. So I wondered whether um, Mr. Fox was set over to say anything about what more we could do to ask for um, employment sites or to perhaps suggest where we might like to see them and see if others would bring them forward. So just really a few comments to address Councillor Horrell's points and to ask that question around employment sites. Thank you. Uh, Ms Fox, would you like to answer that now or should we go on to Councillor Horrell and then we'll come back to you? I'm happy to um, just address the point about <laughs> employment sites, if that's okay. Yes, thank you. Um, I think the same goes for housing sites. I know we talk about housing uh, a lot, but in terms of employment sites, we do want to be proactive in terms of obviously making sure this plan is for us. And if local communities have good ideas where employment sites should be in their locality, we are very keen to hear that as part of this consultation so that we can obviously do some further investigation. So say, for example, if there was a settlement where uh, they thought there would be a, a good need for uh, employment site and it hasn't come forward, forward um, as part of the Sheila, we are very keen to hear about that so that we can do our own investigations to see obviously who owns the land and whether or not it would be suitable for employment sites. And that's that's a really important message that I would like to get across is that uh, we want to be in the driving seat. We want to hear from local communities. They know their community the best. So we are very keen to hear if there was a site that is suitable for another use uh, that could come forward. So um, thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Horrell, did you want to say something? Um, I did. Thank you, Councillor Porter. And it was about the document itself and the language and definitions. Uh, this evening we've had an interesting discussion about brownfield but there are many terms used in this document that um, we might all be familiar with but many of our residents will need help in understanding those definitions and i think we need to perhaps expand that level of detail in the document and also some of the language that we use i think we there's a lot of um technical speak and that's no disrespect to the officers or indeed um, it's not common parlance and I think the the more we can make this uh, language uh, user friendly I know in housing we've had for a reader panel for many years and I think sometimes putting those things in front of a panel of individuals and just getting their view is is, is often helpful um, Equally, I think this whole access to documents, because there are so many interlinking pieces um, for us as councillors, we might be trying to seek some of this out. So uh, poor members of the public trying to engage on some of these uh, sites, certainly on our current website, um, it can be quite difficult. Okay. So I think um, accessing documents, I think, is really important because that then allows people to take on board the content and, and give, give a, a consideration. For example, we talk about the deprivation index. I challenge most people to understand what it is, where it is, what it says and how that was calculated. But, you know, we, we, we throw out these comments in the document, but actually um, many people will be reading it and wanting to understand um, that information. Um, the other piece that I, um, Councillor uh, Ferguson mentioned digital, but the other piece that I thought was uh, an interesting challenge for us, and of course all of this is not necessarily in our domain, is some of our infrastructure issues. We talk about water, uh, we don't talk about sewerage particularly, and we have many settlements where we don't have sewerage uh, facilities and our, our efforts and I know myself I, I tried to lobby Southern Water about that um, several years ago um, but some of those elements in the infrastructure do hinder us 
And I know if you talk to Carla about some of the things that have hindered them at uh, Kings Barton, uh, some of those infrastructure issues have been um, a problem. So just to um, understand where, if any, influence we might have or lobbying we might might do. And, and one final question, Councillor Porter, or point, um, you said that the movement strategy was for, for, for Winchester. It, it sort of is, but actually, if you're in Mitchell Dever and you don't want to drive and park in, in, in town, you want your park and ride in the north of the city so that you can be a good citizen right. and actually take that on board. So there are many um, residents around the district who are interested in what the movement strategy says because it will help them to better contribute to um, the flow of the city and actually not um, having to drive all the way in. So uh, I'm not sure it is just for, for Winchester, it's actually for the broader area. Uh, Thank I, you. I, am, I understand what you're saying. I think uh, the trouble is a lot of people think it's going to solve their bus problems from quite a long way out and, and being realistic that's not what it was about but it is about making sure that people can get into the city and the city is as pleasant and the air is as clean as it can be so I appreciate that um, and I think uh, that's partly why I was really pleased to hear some co some really constructive comments today about uh, making sure that we have got those terms in the document that do make it easy to understand and and I'm a huge advocate for making sure that documents are written in simple language that the public don't that aren't they aren't put off by page two and think they, they're not going to go any further. Um, and uh, certainly um, the challenge of infrastructure issues I know has already is already being dealt with by the officers as well. So that is another layer uh, that goes on to the evidence that ties up with this paper. And as you say, we know only too well how many people in the wards that we represent don't have uh, necessarily have access to uh, a sewage system that most people think is is completely normal for the rest of the country. So thank you very much indeed. Um, Councillor Brooke, did you want to say something? I did. Yes, please. Um, it was just reference to the comments that Councillor Ferguson and Mr Fox made about um, seeking ideas for business and the like. So over the past 18 months I've seen a real decline in the conversation between Winchester and Haven about West of Waterlooville. Um, far less engagement with their members and actually the practicalities of what happens in West of Waterlooville um, affects the residents of Haven't in many ways far more than it does those of Winchester. And there was also reference to uh, Whiteley development and the business and um, employment areas there. And I would like to seek some reassurance really that that engagement will recommence with Haven't and that Farum will also be consulted um, and, and open dialogues with Farum on the Whiteley developments regarding employment land and how we can work together with our neighbouring authorities to bring these things forward and, and ensure it's right for all of our residents rather than being so boundary as we have been over the past 18 months. Thank you. Um, I would challenge the word boundary over the last 18 months, but uh, Councillor Ferguson, would you like to comment back on that one? Is she still there? No, sorry, I'm, I am still here. Um, so I haven't, um, in the role as portfolio holder for the local economy, haven't had any conversations with haven't. But through the um, strategic partnerships that have been set up with the market terms, we certainly have had discussions with um, Whiteley um, and with the Sedgensworth bid. Um, but we haven't directly spoken to Ferrum. I, I can talk to the economy team and see whether that's something they've done in the past under previous administrations. Um, but, um, you know, I, I take it on board. Um, we look at boundaries, but um, employment, people work across boundaries. We have people coming into Winchester from the Eastleigh district, from Southampton, etc. Um, so, um, you know, I, I, I can look at it, but we have definitely made a huge effort to create these strategic partnership meetings across the district and that is going well and it's new since we came into the administration. Thank you. Uh, we've also been trying to enable um, Newlands Parish Council and Denmead to speak up um, as a group of parishes uh, down in that area. Um, so I hopefully you know, they will have to stand on their own two feet eventually with uh, the West of Waterloo build, build development. 
um, and so uh, giving them the the tools to be able to do that is is very important whilst still obviously having the support of Winchester City Council. Um, I, I take well, a walk. Would there. Be able to come back on that? Yeah. That, yeah. That, um, just that uh, understandably Newlands and Demi Parish Council absolutely can stand on their own two feet, but they don't represent all of the West of Waterlooville no. development area. No. There are chunks, of, you know, um, yeah. clusters of that that are inhabited. Yeah. So, and and the reality is we are on the doorstep of having a Waterlooville, so yeah. a lot of the decisions impact them more. So we need we need to facilitate that cross boundary discussion. Okay, um, thank you. I I take that on board. I think we'll have to find a way of um, bringing that to fruition, particularly during the COVID times. It, it does. It has been more difficult, and uh, I take that that point. And um, is there anybody else that wanted to comment this evening before we we come to a close? No. Okay. I've got uh, a lot of pages of a very useful comment, and hopefully the minutes will reflect that. Please do read the minutes and we will certainly try and do our very best to reflect some of this in at least some of this and hopefully all of it in the paper that's at Cabinet next week. Obviously, um, it's been published, but um, or this week it's been published, but we'll do some work on this over the next 24 hours and hopefully you will see uh, some differences as a result of the local plan advisory group work today. Uh, thank you very much also to our two members of the public. Um, uh, from Bishop Swartham, uh, Mr Shields and um, Mr Davis. Really appreciate your input this evening. So if that's all we have to say, uh, Councillor, Fo uh, sorry, Mr Fox, is there anything else you wanted to say to finish off this evening? I need to thank uh, everybody on the uh, call tonight for their uh, helpful input. We will certainly try our best to incorporate where we can uh, the comments that have come up tonight. It's always very useful for another pair of eyes to have a look at the document because we do work very closely with it. So thank you very much for your really helpful comments. We will try our best to incorporate them before obviously the cabinet agenda goes out. Uh, there is quite a time timetable for that to go out tomorrow. So uh, we will try our best, but I shall be logging on first thing to do my best. And and actually uh, a lot of it doesn't change the sense of what the cabinet paper is about. It's about the detail of when it goes onto the website and, and when it's called off. So um, we will certainly use that, including I think the glossary is a, an interesting point. So we will certainly do our best to uh, to incorporate as many of the comments as we can. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, I'd like to wish you all good evening. Thank you. Good night.